Okay, we're recording. And we're on. Oh, I really need to do that. Formal written advance notice is required by NJSA 104 has been provided at this provided at this meeting at least 48 hours in advance of today, giving the time, date, and location, and to the extent known at the time, the agenda of this meeting. Such notice stated that formal action may or may not be taken. The notice was posted on the bulletin board outside the offices of the municipal clerk, reserved for this and other similar announcements, provided to the suburban trends, the newspaper designated by the borough council to receive such notices and filed with the borough clerk. Can we stand for a pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, roll call, please, Liz. Mr. Silverstein. Here. Mr. Quigley. Here. Mrs. Novak is excused or late or late. Yes. Mr. Ross. Here. Mr. Siopa. Please. Absent. Absent. Okay. Mr. Kimberlin. Here. Councilman Bennett. Here. <coughs> Mayor Sarah. Here. Mr. Delias. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Oh, here. Okay. And Ms. Russell. Here. Okay. First order of business is the um, approval of the minutes of our last meeting, which was on April 18th, 2024. Do we have a motion? So moved. Motion. Second. We have a second. I'm sorry. Who second. Oh. I was one, and I think uh, Ken was two. No. James. Okay. okay um, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone voting present? Present. Present. Okay. Two presents. And who are they? Councilman Bennon? Okay. Yep. And who was the other one? Jim Kimberlin. Okay. Okay. We actually have correspondence. <laughs> and a lot of it. One of it's like 70 pages. So, um, <clears throat> uh, first one was um, we'd like to welcome Eck to the um, board. Um, he replaced um, Councilman DeLine, who stepped down uh, for, um, for personal reasons. So that was number one. The second one, in no particular order, um, well, I think they can do it in some order. Um, Borough of Oakland um, has passed a dust control policy. I don't know, Mayor, if you want to mention anything about that. I know well, the good news is the Oakland project was turned down for the concrete plant that they were going to put up. Uh, there was a lot of push from the assembly over there. They happened there. With a, a good group of people put together, they turned it down so they will not be putting in any cement plant over it. It was going to be right on Colfax at the end of mm -hmm. Colfax on the end of Bob. A nightmare for us and a nightmare for them. So. Just, just so you know, for the public that has, that, um, when, when every neighboring town does something that's mm -hmm. near us in that 200 foot radius, they are required to send us the ordinances that they pass before the second reading, I believe, in case we have an issue. Um, the next one is um, from Wayne. And um, they're, 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 just, they're just changing um, some parcels from open space to R30 residential. Um, so that's what they're up to there. And the second one is deals with um, Tier A municipal stormwater general permits. And from what I got from that, reading that, it had a lot to do with tree removal um, and size of trees and planting the trees. The big one, though, is from Bloomingdale. Um, Bloomingdale introduced, introduced an ordinance um, for adopting a redevelopment plan for um, a huge tract on Union Boulevard, 45 acres. Um, this is the ordinance. Um, I skimmed through it, and basically, I think what the public here needs to know, and I don't know if the mayor and council are going to have any um, response to that. We are. They're planning on that 45 acres to build three um, residential buildings, six stories high, with a total of 500 apartments, um, a 60,000 square foot industrial building, and something called an amenities building. So it's a huge, huge project in, in Bloomingdale. Um, the only thought I had, I mean, generally, I, I, is that I'm not sure what it does to the traffic in Pompton Lakes, and I'm really not sure 
when you get off on the exits on 287, um, going towards, I mean, we wanted to come to Pompanlitz, whether that was wonderfully engineered exits that are hard to do anyway, um, are going to get even more traffic. So that's the only input I would have on that. So I don't know what the mayor and council want to do. With it. Well, just in association with that, I had a meeting with Tilcon. Tilcon is building a new road through Wanakue that's going to come out by Burger King. So all the truck traffic that we have now on Broad Street will be taking that new road route. I took a, a, a tour of the road. They actually cut the mountain 150 feet on both sides, and it's six lanes wide. Uh, it's a large, large road that's going to go right through the mountain and come out of Burger King and Wanakue. So all the truck traffic from Tilcon will now go that route and not hit onto Broad Street, which is a great news for But we have no input on the, the... No, I mean, you know, they, they've talked about it as well. So basically. Okay. So um, that's what's happening in Bloomingdale. And that's the only correspondence that we had. Executive Director's report? The Executive Director's report, Ben? Yes. Um, with regard to 223 uh they have pulled their permits and they anticipate starting site work either next week or the fall. Okay. Um, just coordinating with the, the contract, but they've begun ordering um, long lead time items, elevator, windows, things like that. So they're, they're moving along. We start seeing activity there in the next two weeks. Okay, that's good. Um, they haven't, unless they've sent them to you, we've never gotten the 30 day reports that they were supposed to send. Yeah, no, he, he sent it to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, and I just digest them for you, for you here. I mean, it's not much more than, than that. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was just been an email. Okay. Um, we have no conceptual presentations. Just a quick zip change to the um, agenda. Um, instead of get, doing the formal application, which probably will take some time, let's go over to the resolution for Salvador and Nolita Police, 54 Wanakee Avenue, Pomp and Lakes. Lot 2400, lots one and two in the DRA zone. If you remember, we heard that back in March. Um, it's really nothing but trying to um, put a, um, I guess, just kind of like a porch, for lack of a better word, um, on the side of the uh, building. It's the Taylor building, um, the Taylor's building over by um, across from Little. Um, we, um, we had no problem with that. Um, I don't know if they're going to do the project. But um, uh, Carm and I spoke to um, Sal and Nolita, and we decided that if they ever decide to do it, no sense having to have to come back here. We'll just pass the resolution, and then they can go to the planning board if they ever decide to do the project. So with that, is there a motion to approve resolution 2400, lots 1 and 2, zone DRA? Motion. We have a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion? Ten. Have a roll call, please. Mr. Stelsey? Yes. Mr. Quigley? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Kimberlin? Uh, yes. Councilman Bennett? Yes. Okay. So now we get to the, the heart of the meeting. Um, formal application, Pomp and Smith Properties, LLC, 201 Wanakew Avenue, Pomp and Lakes, Lot 6300, Lot 1, Zone DDD 1. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the, the development agency. It's good to see you again. Steve Malenik from Greenbaum, Rose Smith & Davis here on behalf of Hopkins Smith Properties, LLC. Um, take a minute to level set. It's been a long time since the last time we were before you, and uh, we have some new faces. Uh, so what we are proposing here is a project on 201 Wanakue Avenue that will be a mixed-use project between retail and residential, uh, including affordable housing. Last time we were here, uh, we listened to the comments that were made, and ultimately at the end of that meeting, it was suggested a subcommittee of this group be formed uh, to meet with the applicant once changes are made. That has taken place, adjustments have been made. Uh, we've submitted new plans, and then resubmitted those plans that, uh, again, so there's now three iterations of those plans and are prepared to go through and, and describe what the changes are. Before we get into that level of detail with our engineering expert, with our architect expert, there are clearly two big issues that, that warrant discussion up front here. Um, and let's start with what our ask is of the agency. There's going to be, at the end of this, whether it's today, whether it's the next meeting, the before, the principal asks. One is, we want you to approve our project. We think it's a great project. It's going to benefit uh, the borough tremendously. Um, and, and authorize uh, Mr. Brewer and I to negotiate a redevelopment agreement. 
Two, as you probably know, this project is uh, necessitates an easement, an easement from the pothole lot into our property, vehicular and pedestrian, to allow access to our parking level. We know that this agency can't grant that easement, so what we're asking for from this agency is a recommendation to the council that they do so. Three, we, we need changes or amendments to the redevelopment plan that's currently written. Um, those are identified in, in the application submission that we made as well as the plan that our engineer will go through with you as well. And then fourth, as, as you've likely seen before, um, if we get through all of that, we would like to present to you our financials and make a recommendation um, for a pilot here, and you would ask that you recommend that to, to the council. So those would be our four asks at the end of this process. But the two big ones we know that we spent a lot of time at our last meeting discussing, and then again at our subcommittee meeting, and uh, know that they're really seminal threshold issues are the easement and the retail. So I'd like to begin by having a discussion on those topics and make sure we have an, an understanding or understand each other with respect to, to what we're looking for and, and the borough's perspective on that before we even start talking about you know, the colors of the side of the building because it really is moot if we don't get past those two larger issues. So I want to start with the easement. This property, um, to make work, and we've revised it several times, we've made it smaller, we've increased the retail, and in doing so have, have reduced unit counts, um, and we also are sensitive to, to the amount of parking um, that the borough has sought from other redevelopers that has obtained and, and requires here. So to do that, we need two levels of structured parking on this property. The way the grades are structured, and, and the way uh, that the lot is designed, or the project is designed, does not allow for connectivity vehicularly between those two levels. I mean, they can't have a ramp from one level to the other. So we need access to both levels. And the only way to do that is to have one access on the streets, which we have at one level, and the other from the rear through the pond. Now, as you all know, all the businesses around around the pond hall have parking access and access to the buildings. What we're asking for. Um, for a project of this scope, and what we need legally is that to be re recorded in an easement. We're not asking for a specific lane or any specific property on the pothole to get us there. Um, because we understand we don't know what the world is going to look like tomorrow, let alone 30 years from now in that lot. You may want to put a parking garage there, you want, may want to build something. We understand. All we're asking for is whatever you design and whatever you do, as long as we have a way to get there, zigzag or whatever that we have that right. Because without that easement, we'll never get a bank to finance this project. Um, we'll never get title insurance on this project um, because there's no legal right in perpetuity that those unit owner or those apartment tenants will be able to access the property. Um, and obviously, it's a property right that we're asking for. There would have to be consideration for that, whatever the value of that is to be negotiated later on. Now, having said all that and understanding that this body can't give the easement, I'd like to pause there and get general feedback on if this is something that, if everything else works out, the agency would be open to uh, recommending to the council with particular attention. I'm interested, of course, in, in mayor and uh, council and Bennett's comments on this. Uh, but we see this as a threshold issue that should be discussed up front. Would the easement take any of our parking spaces out of the pond hole? The way it's designed right now, because we would need access, obviously, to our property, it would remove where two spaces are now, obviously we compensate for that or work with you to try to find those spaces elsewhere. So only two spaces would be lost. Correct. Who, who maintains the easement? Is that the borough or is that you? Like if it snows? Well, these, again, because it's not a specific area, um, we would, we were, we're contemplating an upfront con consideration that would contribute towards whatever you, you know, however you want to allocate that, those funds, but it would be municipally maintained, just as it is now. But that, can, that can be a subject of negotiation that easements can have within them the delegation of responsibility for who does things. They have that's the position that they have, but that can be either way. We wouldn't kill the project over that discussion point. As far as how many parking spots would be for the pothole easement, how many cars would be going in and out? So that level has 39 parking spaces. What would be the process to reverse an easement if, if we ever need it? 
you would it, you wouldn't be able to do it unilaterally. You would need to you and the property owner, whoever the property as owner is at the time, would have to negotiate that. Okay. No questions. So I, I can tell you from my perspective. I can only speak for me because okay, this is going to be going to the council for a vote to certainly understand. Mm -hmm. The easement comes from the council, right? It doesn't right. come from this board. It comes from a recommendation, of course, for you guys, but you're just uh, supportive to the recommend. I have an issue with the easement. I do because of the fact that I can't speak to what the, the public will do or the councils in the future will do. They might want to build a whole building on that site and not have any parking in there. They might want to put a parking garage. They might leave it as it is. I, I can't, with good conscience, make a move now that might affect us 20 years from now. That, that's my issue. I understand what you're asking for. I understand why you're asking for it. But it, it's a big ask. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a big ask. <coughs> and that's just my personal opinion. I, mean, I, I just want to clarify you understand that my point in that you can build a parking garage in there and maintain the easement. But well, we'd still have to find a way to make the easement work. With the park mm -hmm. What happens if we move our municipal building? And there, there would be no easement, you know, and, and there was talk years ago, you know, 10, 12 years ago, of moving our, our municipal. We still have parking around that time. We would, but but now you're jig-jagging around parking lots to get into your building. So it's not a straight line in, it's going to be, you know, and then I got cars coming in, it could get very messy. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I, I wish you could figure out another way, because I like the project, I do. The project's a good project. Um, another way to make it work with a ramp or, or other entrance, or the use units, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, we so the, the topography of the land, the cost of construction, and what the cost would be to excavate to go down for those levels. There's no less units. We've looked at it. We've tried. Our council might like, bank it. Right. We we can't. The only alternative that would be possible here for this project to be feasible, or any project even in its close to its scale would be to eliminate the one parking level and to serve those 39 spaces in the pothole through licensing. Through licensing. Which we understand you have 100 spaces now available from the theater. Maybe not that much, but right, not that much. But I mean, it, that, you're right. That is another consideration. Um, again, that would have to be talked about at the council. Uh, you know, what, 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 you don't want to obviously fill out every spot that we have, right? Sell it out, because then that would cause us issues. Um, the 39. And I don't know your numbers. I mean, are your numbers at 1.5? You... Our numbers are slightly above 1.4. 1.4. Um, okay, so we're you know we're trying to get to 1.5. You know that's close. Uh, 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 you know that's a, that's another alternative. You're right. It is. Seems more palatable. That would be more palatable. To, to me, yes. But I don't know spots. I don't know counts. I don't know how many, much room we have. I don't know any of those things. I, I and again, I can't speak for the council. I can only speak for myself. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I, I don't want to tie the hands of a future group just because we make a decision that, you know, the building itself, that this is not the issue, it's the easement. That's why I wanted to start this. Right, now you're right, and that's a good way to start. I, I don't think that the easement is really that big an issue. I think we got to fix these problems in Pop Lakes now. Those buildings are old and tired, and replacing them and doing a pilot program would help the borough substantially. And in 30 years, it might not have happened. It might be 50 years, it might be 70 years. You can't hold up progress now, because that's not progress. You're right, uh, I'm, but it could be five years. I don't know, I don't know the answer. Well, you'll still be mayor, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing I would say, too, is I still worry about just the overall traffic flow from the Palm Hole out. It's just very, very tough. It, it gets schools getting left you know is when school is out it's a lot more flexible i just think the flexibility overall it, it's just very very tough to have that many cars coming in and out of the pond plus what's already in there now um i totally get what the mayor is saying too you know I, I get why you need it and i think overall the project looks nice too as well i just have a lot more concerns about coming out of that parking lot going up that that hill right there from from getting out to Lakeside Ave, or trying to go out the other way where the Meridian Project is. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of traffic that's going to be coming out out of that area. So I'm just not too sure. I tend to agree with that. I think that we're, and I like the project also, and I'm, I'm more inclined to recommend leasing spaces than, than an easement. But even with that, my concern is that Babcock and the parking lot is really becoming a, a usable street. I mean, it's, you know, you come in, you go out, and 
folks are, it's going to be a, a, a usable thoroughfare, which it is now, but we're just going to be adding to that. And in that fact, I have a concern with that. Um, if there was a way when we, when the pond hole was redesigned that it was just a parking lot, that may have been something different, but it obviously is a cut through that everybody uses. Okay. Um, obviously, everybody may have some opinions. It's a policy decision, obviously, a big policy decision. Um, so ultimately, and as it's made, made clear, this is a governing body decision. Um, you don't have to make a recommendation. You could, if you wanted, you could listen to the plan and just say it's a condition that they get. They would like a recommendation that you recommend it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. And if you want to take a position, you can. You can, you, you, and if your position is you wouldn't recommend it, that's just as well. Um, but don't, don't believe that you're forced to take a recommend, you know, make a recommendation or it all falls apart. You could listen if you so choose um, and simply make it a condition. Say okay? that's for another body to make. But well, the, I'll the step back. The only, the only comment I'll make to that is that, and I agree with that, but if you were to approve this project, what, can, what you're agreeing to is for, the suburban to negotiate the redevelopment agreement. That redevelopment agreement would only be able to be signed by my client if it's conditioned upon that happening. So in essence, you'd be recommending it because you'd be suggesting a redevelopment agreement or signing a redevelopment agreement that has that condition in it. We're knowing that that is required to have this project go forward. Well, we would know that. Yes. But we can't make that decision anyway. Of course. Can I ask, and, and I, maybe I just don't know enough, there's just mm -hmm. no room inside to have an internal ramp in there? No, we lose way too many spaces. How many spaces would you lose? I mean, Bob, if you can uh, yeah. say at least 15 spaces. Well, that's a better number. Well, what I'm saying that? is that's a better number than 40. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's only 15? 15 to 20 for some reason? Yeah, let's see. 20, roughly, what do we have? 39 is the number. 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 I mean, just another idea, well, yeah. It's another idea, but here, here's the problem. I can talk about that. Licensing the spaces would allow can we just, us. Hold on. Yes. Can we just have one conversation out there, please? Yes. Licensing the spaces would serve, obviously, the ability for us to pay you for the licensing, but we're getting the savings on the excavation and on the level. So now we'd be doing both. We'd have to just right. now. Yeah, you save us money. But. And I've always said this, and you know this about every process. Bring it up. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> the money issues are not my concern. Right? The money issues are everybody else's concerns. Uh, I have to worry about what else is good. Um, and you're right, it becomes an issue. Money is always an issue. Park is always an issue. It's a big yeah. issue, right? Uh, it's just a suggestion. I'm just saying you would cut back considerably. And I think 20 spots is more reasonable than 40 spots. Yeah, it's a matter of efficiency because if the difference is 19 spaces, right? We're building a whole other level that's going to cost us a million dollars to build for 19 spaces. Probably not fit, but we can, we can certainly look at that. So we're saying maybe a combination of licensing and right. just keeping it internal. Right. So, a ramp, so what I'm saying is a ramp on the inside. Right. And to do that, you would have to move spaces inside. Sure. It's roughly 20. Maybe that's something we can license to him at 20. But there is a cost. There is a cost. Without a doubt. I mean, whether it's a cost to, to all of this, I mean, if, if the borough was to grant you the easement, there's probably going to be a substantial cost to that, too. Mm -hmm. So, which would be unknown right now. In the interest of my client, I'll, I won't say substantial, but yes. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah, one more what question you, about yeah, the easement itself. Yeah. So the spots that you're losing are the spots that would be in front of your garage, correct? Yes. That's correct. The, the one, there are spaces right here if you look on the screen. Correct. Right. So those are the only actual spaces you're two, losing. Two of them, yeah. But the way that, that the parking lot is situated now, it's and, and, and I've said this to our engineers back when we did this, it's not a maneuverable parking lot right now. It's a, it's a difficult parking lot to kind of drive you're through. Just because your line or the ones we're proposing? Our line. You're the one existing. Okay. So even an easement in that would make it, it, it's a difficult route because mm -hmm. the way those angled cars are in and the right lanes are narrow, we had an issue with the fire trucks. And we had to remove an island because they were something. Because they could make the radius turns. Um, so, you know, just keep in mind too, it, it's not the old parking ponto where it was straight back, back and forth and you could do plenty of room in there. The way it's angled, which we got more spots in, made it a little more difficult. Good old days. Good old days. <laughs> You're swimming in your car, but at least you can get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Clark, well, I, I appreciate the conversation. It sounds like we, we should move forward because it sounds like there's, there's some options that can make the project work one way or the other. Obviously, we're not going to decide that. The council is going to decide that. The, se the second issue where we got substantial discussion at the last meeting and then the subcommittee meeting again um, was the retail. Obviously, those spaces for those properties right now are retail fronting. Um, approximately 7,000 square feet now. Not all the spaces are leased. And they're not all going to be leased in perpetuity. It's a different retail market. Uh, there's already been some comments regarding this, this, the status of those buildings. Um, you'll recall we initially came in proposing two spaces. Um, and I can't remember the square footage, but it was, it was a couple thousand square feet, perhaps. We have increased that significantly. We're over 5,000 square feet, so we're not far from where we were. Um, obviously, retail can be divvied up into however many spaces a tenant wants, but it can be divisible in, into multiple spaces. Um, we think that's much more, much better than what it was. It meets what you guys were, were suggesting was an issue in your initial review. Uh, but we also think it meets market demands for, for that area of town. Um, we cannibalize the existing small businesses on Wanaku. So th those were the, that was the second issue that I thought warranted a, a, an upfront discussion of whether what we're showing now um, meets with the comments that were suggested at the last meeting. How, how much square footage is retail now? 7,000, you said? No, that's what, what it was. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what it was. You say that's what it was, that's not what it is. Uh, yes, that's what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, was, was confused too, Mayor. Yeah. That's what it is now, correct? Uh, we can see where it is on the plans. But we're going to have our architect just sworn in now to answer these questions. Okay. About this. Yeah, you can put those up on the screen. Well, you can raise your right hand, state your name, spell your last. Brittany Klim, K L I M M. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give this evening before this board, this agency, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you got? Yes. So, Ms. Klim, on, on the screen is a plan prepared by your office titled Sheet 8201, proposed lower level floor plan, upper level floor plan. And this. Uh, plan depicts there's one, two, three retail spaces here and then a coffee shop on one of you there, right? That's correct. Okay, and then the question was what we're proposing in terms of square footage. Just, just, be, just before you go on, just be, for, for the public, just because you see coffee shop there, it could just assume be retail space number four. Yes. There's no necessarily plan yes. for that, okay? It's just retail spaces. Correct. Um, previously, the coffee shop, or we're calling it the coffee shop, was 1,150 square feet. It is now 1,120 square feet. Um, the retail on the left hand side, on the corner of the left side, was um, 1,460 square feet. And now it is comprised of three spaces. Um, starting with retail one, 916 square feet. Hey, Steve, could you just point out what the mouse just where she's talking? So I'm going to go on. Retail one on the left. Okay. Um, in the center, retail two, again, 916 square feet. And retail three is 919 square feet. So we added about 1,500 square feet total retail. And again, these they, these are being shown as three spaces, but they could be all one space or two spaces, right? Yeah. So what was the current existing square footage of retail? It's approximately seven thousand. Approximately seven thousand. Just on the first floor, or yes. that include because they have space upstairs too. That's the first. This is the There's no second. Floor. Do you have an exact number? Was it 7,000 exactly? 7,500? 7,500? We can get that for you there. I don't have it. Let's just You'll know exactly. No, about 7,000. We'll get the exact number. Less. So what you, 
you did is add more retail on the left side to make room for your entrance on your garage, correct? Right? Yes, we, we refigured the plans here. I'll let Ms. Quinn speak to that. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you? We can stay focused on the retail. Sure. So, um, with regard to the change in the retail, from the space that we had previously, we reconfigured um, the parking and the entry. There was parking um, prior where retail two and three are shown. There was some parking in that. So, originally the parking, or not originally, um, at the prior hearing in January of 2023, on the first floor we had um, 33 spaces, and now we have uh, 28 spaces. So the additional space went from parking to retail. We also moved the trash down to the um, lower level, uh, the lower level parking, which was a recommendation of the agency to take it off this level and move it down. That could be an issue because I don't know if a garbage truck would be able to make it into the pond. That would be tough. We're, yeah, that might that might be a difficult one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's tough. Okay. Um, I, there are dumpsters next to that. There's dumpsters there today, there's but, dumpsters but there's no right. But there's no which I assume are empty by trash trucks. Yes, they are, but there's no parking for you there. Yeah, you would have spots there at some point, 20, 40, whatever. It's no, but those would be in spots. Yeah, well, you were saying you didn't think a trash truck would be able to Well, that's because the lot's open. That's what I'm trying to say. The oh, you're saying the lot is open. Well, actually, the lot right now is completely full of cars because this is the high school. There's a graduation going on. Yeah, so every spot in the yeah, lot today, is filled yes. and there's cars circling. Yes, today. Today would be a good way to see a car truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still a yes. room to drive around. Right, and when cars park, they block the back of the building because the space is, because the property lines, right. our property line and their property line. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and there's striped spots. Yep. Comments for anybody on the board about this? That's a good compromise. We want more retail. You had more retail. And uh, I recognize that retail is tough right now, thanks to Mr. Amazon. But it is what it is. But um, I think it's a fair compromise. Anyone else have any comments? No? I, quick question about the retail and I guess the parking for the retail. How would that work? Is it just going to be right outside the retail? It, it, it's We're proposing the parking is going to be handled like any other downtown business. It's just through street parking on a lot. We're, we're, we're basing our ratio on the residents. The residential use. Okay. Anyone else have any Just so the board and, and everybody's aware, we are going to be putting in uni meters in the probably next three months in that back pond hall that will incorporate paid parking spots that you bought from the town, shopping, students, and workers. They'll be separate. You know, it'll be a computerized system that you can break out in, in a card on how you do that. So if they were to buy 20 spots, they would, would be computerized by license plate to know that those 20 spots are somewhere in that pond. They're not going to be next to the building. They may be, but they're not guaranteed. So if, there no, if there's no other negative comments or, or questions about the retail, we can go into our full presentation now. I, no. Those were two. I, I don't have a problem with the overall retail space. I know you're going to talk about tandem parking. I don't think I have a problem with that. But just as you go through with my overall comment, and I think I had this comment before, I just think it's too big for the lot. And we talked about that in the other videos too. I understand the economics of it. Uh, lots height. I, I, no, I just think I think the bulk, the, 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 the mass of the project or the size of the lot is we're trying to force a lot of stuff on it with a lot of different things that the municipality needs to do to make it work. And I just think it may be too much. But you can you know, certainly go ahead with your presentation. So yeah, and when you figure out those numbers, I just want to know the, the retail, what it is and what it is proposed. Do you want the numbers? Well, if it's 7,000 approximately is existing, 
that I added up what's on the sheet right now, and that's only 3,800. Right. That's mm -hmm. So that's we're still case. at a loss of almost, you know, 3,000. That's a big loss. And I get retail's hard, but you know, that's and a big loss. Personally, the the this the whole point of the redevelopment authority is to provide residential that can walk to retail. And if we start taking out all of our retail, then we've lost the point of the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think I think, I, the, okay. I think I had brought that up to you last time. Was we're trying to bring in more people and more demographics to handle retail, restaurants, whatever you say, it makes sense to build here, it makes sense to have a restaurant, whatever it may be. And if there's just not enough square footage for that, and I, you know, I know from a parking perspective, being in town for a very, very long time, people like, you know, that's always been a big issue too. Not that you guys have to always come up with a plan for that type of parking unless you're only doing retail, which I would say that would be something to look at. But retail is hard right now, and I get it. I just worry that there's just not enough there for right now. But I think the retail, I think we're talking about retail in a, even going forward in a very different way than a clothing store or, you know, something like that. I think what the retail with the apartments is going to generate are restaurants and, you know, lifestyle type businesses, not the traditional retail icon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but you well, still I mean, have they, to have the square yeah, footage that's for yes, them. No, I, I agree with that. No. I agree with that. I think for what we have right now in town is very, there, you know, it's not necessarily traditional retail, but we have the opportunity to have more people in the area that can bring in different types of boutiques and, and different types of businesses, which is what we're looking for. I know it's very hard right now, and yeah, I know the owner has come up and he said it like, look, I can't even lease the space that he has right now. I get it. Um, I, you know, I don't have the answer for it. I'm just, my, my concern is just there's still not enough retail. So what I, I like to, I like to say redevelopment is just about finding the balance between all the levers, right? We all, we all have our desires. I, I heard just in the last five minutes competing desires. We want more retail, but it's too big. Um, and you see the shape of the lot that we're trying to play with here. And to get what we're all saying we all desire, which is 7,000 square foot of retail, a 1.5 ratio of parking, no access to the pothole, and let's make it smaller. I mean, that's not happening, right? So we have to give on one of those things, whether it's the retail, whether it's the parking, maybe it's a much lower ratio. Maybe it's the size of the building, maybe we go up a couple of levels. Nobody wants that, right? So we have to pinpoint where it is that we can pull one of those levers on to get the other. Because uh, we're not going to get all of them. But pulling all five levers at the same time is no good either. Which is I don't, but I don't think that's what we're doing. Well, I, look, the retail to me, and, and look, we can talk about retail changing or it's good or it's bad. I, I, I agree with with, uh, with most of you guys up there, including what Ken is saying. We should at least stay in what we have. Maybe coming down a little bit. But we should, that's cutting, it's cutting it in half, the retail, basically. That's what it's doing. Mm -hmm. um, is, you know, and maybe I go back to what Mr. Brewer said. I mean, Mr. Stokestein said, maybe the project's too big for to make that happen. And I understand the numbers, and I understand what the costs are. But at the end of the day, we don't want to lose our downtown or, or our retail. Okay? There might be empty stores for a while. There might be empty. But I think with the turnaround of people in time, those stores can fill up. Yeah, well, probably you're, you're asking for somebody to invest in a bank or investors to invest in something that maybe they're empty for a while. So we just won't get built. I, yeah, I can't answer that right yeah, now. I just won't get built. It's the reality. That, you know, that's your guys' decision of what you want. But yeah, well, what I, I think that I, what I, if I remember correctly, the last two meetings, retail was a major question that came up numerous times. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you, you would get work on it, which it seems like you did. You put some time and energy into it, but I don't know if it's enough. And that's up to you guys if you think it's not. Well, we were we were proposing about, last time, about 2,600 square feet. Uh, we've increased it by about yeah. Short of 1300, so we yeah. did a 50 percent increase. In what was yeah, 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 no question. If I remember from last time, too, the upstairs parking had um two entrances, did not that we went we reconfigured the that uh, was even before the last meeting, even before the yeah. last one. Yeah, that was the original, that was the OG meeting. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had ingress and egress at both sides, right? We brought in dynamic traffic and we revised so it, it doesn't play out that way, correct? 
I, I mean, from my standpoint, and just being upfront and honest, I mean, I like how it looks. I don't think it's necessarily too big per se. My biggest concern is there's just not enough retail. And, and if, if you said that was a big stumbling block, at least from my standpoint, it is. Because I see that we're gonna, we have a lot of projects that are coming down. We want the ability to have that nice walking feel, walking to different places. And and I get from the whole financial aspect of it, right? It's, it's not just financial. I mean, look at the, the design of it. You don't, you, you can't get in to park it. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I, I, I totally get it. Because yeah. I remember we were talking about that too as well, just right on that road there, especially during school hours. Right. How's that gonna, how's that whole flow gonna work, right? Um, I, I get it. What I'm saying though here is if you look up, this is my cursor. If you add the square footage that we're suggesting, it's going to take up the full length of the building, and then there's no access to even park any park any park. Yeah. So it's just this is this is it has not a financial issue. That's just a space issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure what is considered a retail anymore. So we have, for example, two or three tattoo shops in town. Is that retail or is that professional services? Is uh, are the restaurants retail or um, the gyms retail? I don't even know. It's not retail is not like it used to be. It's not five room singers and Gelman's retail stores. I don't know what I don't know what it is anymore. I guess we're just saying that the first floor is really more business focused. I guess. Well, the accounting firm is that is that retail? I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't well, know what you would call. According to the zoning, it is because the Fisher Accounting Firm is on the first floor of the storefront. <laughs> Because we, we, I think we, we, I believe when the master plan was redone, um, even I think when I was on the planning board, certain of those businesses like the hearing aid place that used to be there and businesses like that, doctors and things of that nature, were okay on the um, on the first floor. Okay. So that I, I think what we're what we're saying is, first floor businesses may be better than retail. But, but maybe they're saying it in retail, but you know, businesses, it's just not business space. So again, with, with the matter of balancing all the issues here, we want to be able to park on site, right? We, we need to be able to, where you rightfully have designed your redevelopment plan to require on site parking, which means we need access on site, which this lot doesn't have right now, right? We, we're a street park, and then there's a couple of spaces, but it's access through pothole. I'm just trying to, in my head, in the spirit of compromise, try to figure this out. I just don't know where we put that extra retail here and still have the access to the garage. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Mr. Chairman, but yes. I'd like to hear from more professionals who know about easements and things like that. Is that a common practice to have easement through a town? <laughs> so, yeah, there's easements throughout many things, that you for traffic, utilities. Um, utilities are the most common one. Uh, for a cross access easement, like this would be for, for vehicles, it happens. Uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, it's not the most common thing to do, but you're in a unique situation here with the location and what's going on. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the, the town in general will need to look at it and say, does uh, what's being asked benefit the totality of what's going in there? Uh, you know, there, there's ultimately, there'll be if there is an easement as opposed to, I believe it said leasing the spaces, there, there's a big difference there between the two. Um, I don't know which way you guys want to go one way or the other, but. You know, I've, I've seen it both ways. Chris, do you have any comment? Not regarding a not regarding an easement. I okay. uh, I've, I've seen them plenty of times. I, I don't think it's an uncommon. That I understand your concerns. I was just looking at the size of the pond. Line. But I, I agree with what Tom said. We can't say, you know, we don't know when, so we're not going to do anything now. Uh, so we have no idea when it is. Um, yeah, I think that they clearly particularly that it doesn't have to be a particular meat and bound easement. As long as they have access, however you get through, it, it works. So I think their flexibility in that regard is, is helpful. 
But I think that flexibility is what would cause the problem. Because I think that's where it's a free for all trying to get to their driveway entrance. If there's no set path, there's no, no, you, we're, just to be clear, we're, we're saying we're flexible. You can set the path. Right, right, but we're not going to do that probably. Well, so it's going to be, it's going to be, no, I'm not saying we're not going to do these, but I'm just saying we're not going to set a path. And when, I, when I say flexibility is that in the future, should there be other construction or reconfiguration of the lot or, you know, you put in the stormwater part, I don't know, that they will be able to accommodate their vehicular entrance if it changes in the future. Not that it's all willy-nilly now, but that they can, you can move it. Right. Yeah. Left, right. 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 But if, but they, if there are properties there now that have parking or access in the back, you're going to have to provide that in some fashion in the future, right? If there's other buildings, not just this property. I, I don't know that for sure. I mean, I, uh, we don't we don't have any easements with any. I understand, but there might be a presumptive easement saying, look, we've been yeah, accessing this for all this time. <laughs> now you tell us we can't. We can't use the back of our store, get in or out. I, I, I don't know. You can check. It, you is, it that, is nearly impossible to get a presumptive yeah. easement or adverse possession Almost against same. municipality, governmental entities. And I, and I agree with impossible. Mr. Brewer, which is, which exactly, is, why why we need, is exactly why we need one. Yeah. I do think it's it's probably not realistic to think. Well, let's assume that the borough agreed to an easement, and we agreed, and the borough agreed to a path. This is how you get from A to B to get to your garage. I can pretty much guarantee you, it's un while the easement is enforceable, the folks will drive whatever way they want to through that parking lot. Right now, I, right, what, I, what I'm what I was suggesting, though, Andy, is in this future scenario in which we're going to put up a municipal building or a parking garage. You can create only one way. It just, we're, well, what I'm saying is we don't care what way that is as long as we get in. Right now, of course, people are going to drive any which way. Which way they want. I get that. Okay. So, I guess I guess the question that I have for you, Mr. Chairman, is where we go from here. We're, we're prepared to present the details on this project. We understand, and, and clearly, those are going to be the two major issues. Um, well, I think it's. I have a to speak with Let me see if I can. It seems clear to me that the majority of the folks have a problem with this retail space. I just. I mean, actually, I can speak for myself. I mean, yeah, I, I have a problem with it. Yeah. Ken does? Heck, yes. Um, no, I don't. No, okay. Um, I'm more on the fence with that, but so that's like one, one on the fence. And how about the parking? I mean, what would we do with that? Would we recommend an easement? Or would we recommend leasing the spaces? Um, or would we just not send a recommendation at all and let the borough council contend with it? Unfortunately, again, I think if by setting the building, we're, we're giving weight to provo providing the easement. Even if we're not saying it, we're going, just by saying we're going to push the building through. Well, we but can't push the building through because we can't. Wrong, wrong no, phrase. We can't do that. But by recommending that the building go forward, we're recommending that the easement be granted. Why, why not just leave it? I mean, since the council is the one that's going to vote on it anyway, why even make any recommendation? Well, that's what Andy Brewer suggested before. Well, the, that's, I, that's I the, this is so. the mechanical, this the mechanics, the the problem. They can vote on an easement, but they're not going to vote on an easement if there's not an approved set of plans. For the easement to be at, I don't. I don't think that they're not going to grant an easement. I don't think. But they're contingent. They would want to see it. Maybe there's a way to get it to them. I mean, essentially, it's a veto. That I mean, the governing body's got a veto on this. Um, I don't know if it is. I don't know if it, it's a discussion point for them to go to the governing body and they could weigh in on both how the parking should be and the amount of commercial space. Um, I'm not trying to say that's a good idea, nor do I know if the governing body would give a um, informal or no. Okay, but let's, let's just before we cede or, or cede to, to different agencies, let's assume there was no parking problem. Let's just assume that for a second, and this this body decided that okay, this project is fine, and the 3,800 square feet of retail is fine. Okay, and we enter into a redevelopers agreement. Okay, the that would be between us and them. And the we go to the planning board. And if, in fact, it was a pilot, then the mayor and council would vote on the pilot. 
which could kill the project if they didn't like something. Okay, so at the end of the day, if there were no pilot and this was the project and we had thought that the 3,800 square feet of retail was fine, then it would go to the planning board and it would be built. Well, what, what are the we also need redevelopment plan amendments. Yeah. Right, well, I'm saying it's a word. So the governing body has really yes. at least two or two, three two, things. Two ways to get access. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea for us to kick the can down the street. We deal with this month in, month out for years. I think we have a responsibility to the borough to take it off the mayor and captain's hands with our recommendation either way, pro or con, but I think that's kind of our job. It, it may be, but they still have the ability to. Oh, understood. Sure. Sure. understood. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if we just say, ah, you know, we'll leave it to the mayor and council, you know, it's kind of weak. I, I want to, because just based for the for the three members who were expressed their displeasure on the retail, I, I just need to understand whether we half the size of this building, we cut off two floors, and we only have one floor of, of, of residential, you still need parking. So regardless of the size of the building, I just don't know how we increase the retail and the market. Well, theoretically, you could, it, and I'm not saying you do this, but theoretically, if you cut it enough, you could buy all the spots for less and have no parking. At that point, we're just building a 7,000 square foot retail spot on spec. <laughs> I'm just, that's, I'm just yes. looking at it. You asked how. That's a thousand. That's right. But I'm not saying it's a threat. I, I think the way you have the parking situated is much better than the, the last time you were here. Okay, um, you know, the concern I'm, I'm having, and I think James brought this up, is there's a lot going on in that little spot, right? It's, it's a lot going on, and it's our spot, so we got to make sure we maneuver it and make sure it's right the way we do it, because no matter the best scenario, it's still going to be a tight spot. There's a lot going on. You got school kids parking there, you got people working there, you got people shopping there, you got people coming in and out. Granted, these are off hours, just keep that in mind. That's what shared parking is, right? These people are gone during the day when people are shopping, and then they're back at night when most of the stores are closed. That's the idea behind this whole thing. The question I have is that retail, I'm hearing, and I haven't heard from the owner yet, but that he, they're having issues with retail. And I can tell you that there are people looking for retail right now. So I'm a little confused about that part. All right, well, Billy, one more. Like our retail, our retail spot has been vacant for almost two years now. So. But are you no, offering them a lease? I'm understanding you might have I'm offering them a lease. I tell them what the situation is. And I don't get no calls. I, I've heard from some people who are interested that they couldn't get this. No. We, we should not have the conversation. Yeah, I'm just saying, okay. I mean, I think that's a big deal. If I'm leasing a spot, I want a spot, I want a lease. So, what's our. I mean, I don't think we're prepared to go forward, but if okay. we have members who are, doesn't matter what we say, that they're just pleased with the retail, I need to have a solution to that problem before moving forward. I mean, I tend to agree with you the way the building is situated. Um, there would be no entrance or exit to a first floor parking lot without taking some retail out. It's probably an impossibility. So I mean, I'm, I'm kind of OK with the retail side of it. I'd like to point something out from the retail up to the, um, the first rider. So when you look at the first rendering, um, all the way on the right-hand side, you see what we call the coffee shop. And that's on the corner of um, Wanakew and Colfax. And that, that space wraps the corner, so you get two fronts there, which I think is similar to what the space is now, correct? Correct. And then when you continue down, we have some utility space, which is required to be able to um, make the building function. And then we have um, a uh, parking, uh, I think it's the, the exit on that floor. Yep. The exit coming out onto Colfax. And then continuing past that, the additional retail space has helped to kind of bridge that space that continues around and continue the retail space. I know it, it isn't a huge quantity as far as square footage, but it is a lot of linear square footage along the front of the road. There are projects that we do where we have retail space and maybe it's long and skinny inside the building and then you get very little street frontage. I assume when you guys are talking about wanting retail and businesses on the on the ground floor, what you're really speaking to is having that walkable environment where people are walking down the street and there's windows to look into and there's in interesting things going on. It's not just a bunch of um, you know, greats looking at parking on the other side. Okay. 
And I think that the parking, the retail here is really used to buffer the parking in addition to providing retail space. And that's one of the reasons why it is linear and wrapping around onto Lakeside. Another question I got for you guys, right now there's parking on the retail side. Would that be gone on the street? On Colfax? On uh, Lakeside. Oh, on the other side. No, on, um, I'm sorry, Colfax. So in front of the pizza place, all that, there's parking there now. Is that not part of this plan or is part of this part? Or the, so there's well, cars, you have to lose one of those cars. You're going to lose some, you're going to lose, lose some parts. But you have to lose some, obviously. Yeah, I'm yeah, wondering, just, yeah. that whole strip all the way down to like the yeah. ice cream station is parking. Yeah, the, this, the plan is still showing the, yeah, the space in the driveway entrance. The rest of the I guess the driveway, yeah, the driveway, yeah, the driveway entrance, entrance, right? But everything else, you would still have the same parking area. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the, you mentioned the utility room there. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why it needs to be on the street front like that? Not, interior or the back or the first floor? Well, tip, typically the utility companies drive a lot of the locations on that. And um, it's my understanding that the utility company is requiring us to have the electric meters. They actually wanted them on the exterior face of the building, but that would be quite unsightly. Well, so this, the, the, this protects well, them from Yeah, the this agency will remember, remember we had to actually come back and get Lakeside Commons plans revised. Revised, because they wanted the outside. would not let us move forward without yep. having on the outside. But I understand on the outside. Why couldn't they be on the pothole side on the ground floor? Because you, they can't enter through another um, adjacent property. They have to enter from the right of way. Don't require that. But they usually don't want it going you, under the entire building and coming out on the other side. If, you have, if you drive, people will drive back there, right? If there's an easement, people will drive back there to go have the right of way to the right to get there. That's a are you talking about the, the line being run or the access to the reading meter? I think you've been suggesting moving this electric meter room with the transformer. Right, but the, ele the electric company will probably not let us move the meters to where the, the line needs to run, um, either through an adjacent property or, or under the power property. coming in. The power coming in. Uh, okay. Yes, okay, that's what it's dictating. I understand that. Uh, it's just. It's just no, I appreciate big the question because we're all trying to find this a big chunk of. of yeah. If you remember with Lakeside also, yeah. we had an issue with JCPNL and moving a telephone pole. Yeah, ninety thousand dollars pole. Yeah, I remember that. Other, that about the other corner of the building, by yeah. the other driveway agents. Yeah, there. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Ben has a good point. We could get retail back in that spot. Where's that? Where, where the meters are. That's more retail. That's that's a big. And then you have that mm -hmm. entire. But you said you can't move the meters. Well. No, the meter, the meter needs street, to be accessible right? from the road. The power is going to come from the road. I don't know. Yes, I, well, I think what Ben's yeah. suggesting is, is there enough room to move these meters there? Right. My, Where? my question is, are they, they can is the corner, utility company uh, right there, uh, have the stair. power engine from that side? Like I don't know if the utility, I, I can't agree that the <laughs> utility company will allow us to connect at that point. I don't know where the utility runs. I know the, uh, the water. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. Well done. Uh, could you swear Bob in? Yes. Please you state your name, spell your last. Robert Weissman, W-E-I-S-S-M-A-N. Do you swear or affirm? Sorry. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you'll give this evening before this agency will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you got? I do. And Mr. Weissman's previously qualified as an expert on the sanitation. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's other utilities coming in that location as well. There's the, uh, the water service, um, the... Um, Water, gas, uh, electric, and that, I believe, based on discussions with the utility companies, was the most logical and direct access into the building for, um, yeah, because we were originally going to be coming in off of Wanaku, but then it was decided that uh, Colfax is where the utility should be coming in, and that's the one location. Coming around to Lakeside, I, I'm not sure. I don't think that question was ever asked the utilities to see if it's not uh, possible to come in down on Lakeside. I believe it's a bit of a run. I'm, I'm not sure what utilities exist at Lakeside. I know um, sewers coming up the back, snow drainage coming up the back, gas, electric, water, both all <coughs> assuming to be coming off the call patch. That's why it's there. And I believe they minimized the required area, but the electric meters were. Brought inside the crew, obviously. And they and they were okay with bringing them inside. 
They're not technically Lovely. inside because right. it, it's a room that is open to, open the, to the outside. That's right. I remember that. It's, yeah. not, it's not interior right. in no. the sense that it's a heated. So, or accessible. So I'm not, I'm not clear. I know you brought up a bunch of stuff. There's utilities in the streets. Yes. But you didn't ask them, could it be in that other corner of the building? No. Is that something we look to talk about? This is the street from uh, the ice cream station they put in through the building across the street. Yep. That's, there's, they can find it to that right there. They moved that wall. They I moved mean, that wall. That's right. That is a big, I mean, if you look at the size of the retail sure. spaces, right, how much you're dedicating to transformers and meters, right. and that you have that entire, you know, frontage sure. there. Would be much nicer with that entire frontage than that losing that corner there. It's, well, what is it? Two parking spaces there now? Both well, the park stripe and then the parking space, so maybe just one space. It's possible. You know, yeah, the transfer room is uh, 30 feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah, the transfer room is a lot of clearance spaces. I agree with what you're saying about the retail and the frontage, right? And the windows, the visibility, not necessarily a deep retail, but road frontage. You gain a lot there. Yeah, but th I don't see the space here for that. This is a much bigger square footage. That is a bigger footprint, yes. Then, what, what is that next to a staircase? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I would further, it would take out additional apartment space. That we can do, yeah, that will deal. Yeah. It's just I don't know that we can. We can look at it, but. Yeah, it's about 20, 25 feet wide. We have a room that's 30. There are, so if you, if you would, in order to really get that, and then get the transformer room also, those two rooms together are about 900 square feet. It's like one retail spot. Mm -hmm. Do the transformers have to be adjacent to the meters? That's right. If you take both of them, you have a 900 square foot. Yeah. Can the meters be downstairs? And the, I'm sorry, the transformers downstairs and the meters upstairs? I believe so, as long as the utility company is agreeable to All right, so you can stack them, and then you can use a space or two downstairs without moving your stairs. We have an issue of flooding over there. <laughs> With the basement level parking flood. Potentially. Uh, but it's not going to over reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that may not be a good place to put the electrical, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the floods are. It was a pond. <laughs> it was a pond. We, we also know. Okay, let's get back on track. I don't know if it's a flood zone. It's a good question. It's something to look into. Yeah. Another option we can look into for the retail is where the coffee shop is um, and the uh, pedestrian entry to the, um, the residences. That could go um, adjacent to the transfer room and the handicap parking. The transfer room can slide over to the right. The coffee shop would be, less, would be less deep um, in the direction of uh, Wanakue back toward Lakeside but you would gain the depth. So you get given you still lose all that frontage with the transformer run. That's what we're trying to avoid. Right, but we're thinking about if there's other places to gain the depth. There's just another alternative, not, not to solve the transformer. I, I think moving that entrance over that way is better anyway, because that's a very long hallway for a resident to come in off the main street and have to walk all the way down that to get to the stairs or the elevator. If you came off of Colfax through the yes, sure. handicap parking that would mm -hmm. greatly shorten your your walk. So that that, that one would be good. So so that where you where you have your transformer room now it's something to think about because to me that's a prime real estate spot. It's right on the corner. It's right after your coffee shop or wherever it's going to be. You know that's a pretty prime spot. I understand you have your opening for your parking. Can't do anything about that. But maybe there's a way to put some put retail there and put that somewhere else. That's maybe something you want to look at. Definitely. And that would answer your retail concerns too. I think. Mm -hmm. How much retail would you get back today? Almost a thousand. Almost a thousand. Right, it would be big. Yeah, 
I mean, by a few square feet, it would be the largest one of the parcels over there. Okay. But again, those levers will be yep. missing well, parking and other things. Maybe we solve one lever. If you can do this. Yeah, we'll have a parking lever to talk about next time. Well, then we'll have a parking lever. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Abby. Hi, hi. hi. Abby, you, you need to break a tie. <laughs> can I go, come? I think she can make it. Five people here. Eight thirty-five. What are we talking about here? Yep. We're talking about. And, and if you haven't brought up the, the total number of units with the parking, I mean, you're going to do that at some point. But what is the total number of units with the parking? Yeah. So we have. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. The total number of units. Um, is am I wrong for a second? Um, we have fifty-one units total, <coughs> and sixty-seven parking spaces. Seventy-two with the EV. Say that again, please. So we're getting credit for 72 spaces and, um, or 73 spaces rather, 1.4 72, so just above 70, a 1.4 ratio. Because of the EV, uh, one EV station? No. Uh, no, 10. 10. 51 units, 60, 67 regular park. And then 10 contentious issues. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at those items. We, we want to spend some time going through the other changes that were made to get feedback on it. Um, our architect is right here, so we'll stick with her and allow her to go through the rest of her prepared comments. All right. So, there's other areas we haven't talked about so far. Um, this is wrong there. Uh, the floor plan, um, so the lower level. You know what page you're talking about? Tell us where you're going. Um, on A201. I think we, we hit all of those retail spaces, the shift of the traffic combination room down to the lowest level, discuss that. Um, then on the next sheet, on a 2.02, we have a few unit count has gone from 14 to 12 in this level, and the courtyard has been enlarged. We used to kind of, um, the building used to come in more like a C, and now it is opened up and um, toward the pond hole. And um, there's been a, uh, a dog park added as well on the courtyard level. Good. And the, the two bedroom unit that was um, coming in toward the courtyard has been moved out to the other side. Um, this, on the typical, or I don't know if I'm, yeah, that, sorry, this one is the courtyard that he's shown right now. And then um, this is the typical that he has open, which is the second through fourth floor. And this typical level has 13 units. It prior it had 14 units. Um, and the gym has been enlarged. The gym is now 920 square feet. It used to be 400 square feet. But I say we count that as retail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, switching over to the elevation. Um, oh, sorry, there's no no changes on the following two sheets: the roof plan and the unit layout. No changes on those. We're getting into the elevation. Okay. We're now on page A4.01. Wait one second. Yeah. Okay, 4.01, the post of the official title. Oh, the proposed. Are you in the civil plan? Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, they get into the top right. Okay, Jeff. We can do it up here. Yeah, do it on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. So, um, the call tax 
avenue for sign has been updated to include the new retail storefronts, which we've discussed, and signage. We're asking for two more 45 square foot signs on awnings to go with the new two retail spaces. And on the Pond Hole Municipal Parking Facade side, um, we've updated it to match the building footprint and the adjustments to the footprint. And all of that has been discussed in the renderings as well. And then um, going back to the renderings, uh, next year's materials are the same as presented prior. Okay. So we have renderings from, from this angle and then again from the pot hole. Are you proposing a cab exit on the garage? Coming out here? Uh, yes. Um, you, you guys yeah. I, I couldn't hear him. Yeah, I couldn't hear him. Come up to the microphone. Oh, sorry. If I call, that's Colfax. That's not. Right. So, yeah, I would say coming out, uh, you should have a Save on a basis of size distance to go either way, left or right. Um, the, uh, the short distance from the intersection, so I don't think there'd be a major uh, traffic concern as far as. So, my only concern with that is during school hours, there's a lot of kids driving that, that route. Yes. Um, and making a right hand a left hand turn, turn out of there might be difficult at some point in the early morning, okay. especially when they're leaving for. I mean, it might be easier just to make the right take Colfax to get to 287 through Oakland and try to get through the park. So you think it's, yeah. Maybe we should uh, look towards that, uh, maybe during the start of our hours. Yes. Well, it'll we'll go right out and then left on Lakeside. Yeah, that's yeah. several yeah. most likely to be the fastest way for us. And then they can. I'm, I'm just saying, trying to make it that bad here at 830 and 815, when everyone's getting into school. You try to make a left on the Colfax, that traffic is already backed up on that little corner there. So it's probably best just to make a right out of there. Is it already, uh, you can't turn left from Colfax to Okay. Can you make a left now? If you come, if you went out of the, this building, made a right on the Colfax or left on the lakeside. You can make a left. Yeah. yeah. And follow it around, you can make a left back no, on one again. No, yeah. you only make a right. You only make a right. <coughs> That's what's suggested. But you could also go down Colfax. And make a left somewhere in there. Or, or right 287 and straight through. Yeah, or you could get through yeah. the side through this. We're fine with however the board thinks the same. Right. We straighten the door to certain hours. Make more sense. Yeah. It's just a busy corner at certain hours. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, this was a right that would kind of tie into what we did at a Lakeside Commons. Right. Because you can't, can't go in there. You can't go in there. I'm trying to keep the traffic out that way. I will go out that way. Towards the front of the high school. You know, let's try to keep the traffic away from the Right. When you lakeside, you can't go out that way. Right. Ever. But that's when all the parking is coming in. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how you know, many people wouldn't be coming in during school hours, I don't think. Oh, we, we thought not. That's why we had the exit go out of Colfax. Right. And the entrance come in on lakeside. OK. Probably should restrict that, I would think. Okay. And then the county will have its own regulations. I have not spoken to the county yet about the hazard of what you, you have not, no real driving ability on the county road because everything's on coal lines. You're really not coming out on the water tier roll. Correct. No, I mean, but the county has been known to it's cool look facts. at how long it affects, how this would affect long Take They could. This is a Colfax County also? No, no, that's all. Not, not all of it, you said? Or half of it is half of it. Half third of that fire is not. Yeah, that's far closer to the Up towards the ocean. Okay. Sorry. Chairman, any, anything else for the architect? Uh, for the architect? Sorry, coming in late. But it's okay. So, uh, how big was that dog, dog park? Oh, this is like um, It's a component of the courtyard, right? It is a component of the courtyard. <laughs> I would I would estimate that it's probably around 40 or 50 feet long by 20 feet wide, roughly. Okay, so like a thousand yeah. square feet. Yeah. Um, he's gonna pull up the courtyard sheet so you can see. 
And then, and then, how do you keep that like sanitary and not? Well, so the courtyard in general will be, um, it'll be a concrete podium. The whole, that whole floor level will be a concrete podium as part of the uh, type of construction. Um, the courtyard itself will be depressed slightly and we'll have drains uh, within that slab. Above that, there'll be pedestals and probably like a porcelain paver system. And the, uh, the dog park will have a similar system designed to be used by animals. Um, like I, I know there's some brand names that make them and uh, they, I don't know what they use to, to make them, but they're designed to, um, to be used by animals and have, have waste on them and to... Um, so it'd be like uh, a turf so and, and then a drainage under the turf? Yeah, yeah. The way to put that in, that was important. So going back to the park, you're getting credit for, for the EVs, right? Correct. But you're happy. Are, you have how many EVs, 10 spots? 10 units? Correct. And you had 65 or 6? 67 parking 67. spaces total. EVs are only for the EV or anybody can park there? Anyone can park there. One is required to be at the handicap space. That can only be parked at by a handicap, um, by someone with a handicap flat. But the other EV spaces can be used. By anybody. But as, as you've done in the other projects, we are proposing that every unit, the 51 of them, will get one space assigned to them. Mm -hmm. what, so my, my question, would, that's what I was leading up to, yeah. where are your visitor spots? Or, or are you going to have any? Well, we're showing 67 spaces, 51 units are going to get their spaces, and then the other 16 are going to be uh, not assigned unless they're purchased. So. Right, but a lot of those, a 10 of those are the EVs, so theoretically they could have anything in there already. Right, so that would leave seven really open. Mm -hmm. I'm just nervous that, and we're, and we're running through this with Lakeside. It's one of the things we learned from Lakeside. People are parking in our pond hole because they don't have any space at Lakeside. Um, they're smart enough to know that we're not ticketing yet, but when the new system comes, we will. So they're not buying a pass. So they're basically getting, I don't want that same thing to happen here, where people say, oh, I have a second car. Oh, the spot, the pond, the pond hole's open. I'll just put park in there. You know, that, that's what we have to How are their on street spaces they built working for them? Are they being rented? The on space are working. Yeah, they are working. Are they on street? Yeah, they're, they're on, on street. street. They're, yeah, you know, they're, they're the prime spots. People want them the best because they're closest to the building. So they go quick. But I, I went by there today for a more open in the afternoon. And, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, for the architect, the um, sidewalk on, um, you know, on Lakeside and, and um, Colfax, how, how wide is that? Is that the same? A footprint, or are you using the same? I'm not sure. The sibling here might be able to answer that question. Yeah, we'll bring Bob on. Bob, do you have an answer? Bob. Yeah. Um, we have 10 feet from curb to building. And what, what is it now? I'm oh, sorry? What is it now? What is it now? No. I think that's what you want to know, right? Yeah, I did. Thank you for clarifying that. I keep forgetting when I'm scrolling up and down to look for the information that you're all seeing on the web. I'm driving all over crazy. <laughs> and I, okay. Well, he's looking at the fire. I have another question. The so, week, I'm sorry. Sorry, seven and a half feet. Oh, with seven and a half feet now, currently? That's okay. where it is now. That's okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. And, and then um, yeah, I'm noticing the nice. the uh, doors for retail. Okay, they look like they're flush. They they don't come in like they just open up and right onto mm. the street. They don't like indent like a. Like, they're not recessed. Right, right. Thank you for that one. Yes, that is how it's designed. At okay, that time. that seems like a traffic issue for me, like a foot traffic issue for me. Okay. Um, well, Most, the temple white sidewalk, I don't think it'll be. It'll well, when you're opening yeah. the door, because you mm -hmm. have to open the door out for fire right. reasons, right? So you're going to you know, possibly open it right into someone's space. Okay. Well, we would be. Um, you could recess it. We could recess it. But there, there, are, there are awnings, aren't there? There are, there are awnings, I and mean, they're above the, they're mm -hmm. above the height, but typically people who are you know, through traffic walking will, will walk a little bit away from the building. Most of our right. retail right now is recessed, mm -hmm. and, and most towns have recessed. Um, Entrance ways. 
um, for a good time. That's a good idea. I don't think that has to go very far. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can certainly resist okay. that. That's probably the width of the door, right? Yeah, that would be probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, eye peeling and 20 feet. square feet. Yeah, it's just taking away the square foot. It's taking away square feet. It does. It is. Look at the towns. Look at towns. I mean, that are that are thriving towns. I mean, they don't mm. have flush doors. Oh, I understand the point. Yeah. yeah. No, before you came in, you're. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sure you were. Yeah. yeah. I got it. So, is, and this is an off question. It's not for the architect or anything. But are you offering retail space to your. Uh, uh, people that you have retail now, are they getting get first priority? That's a question for ownership? Yes. So. So I offer that first. And then we get first choice. Of, that's right. And how, how much, um, how many retail, um, one, two, three. There are four uh, retail spaces. Four, and four. how many are there currently? Seven. I think there's seven. Yeah, but it, 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 it's a seven, 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 seven thousand square feet. Right now, yeah. 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 They, when they originally came, there was about 2,600. 2, they increased it by 1300 so now we're back to about 39. Oh, so wait, wait, so, so we're down, but we're still capped. Yeah, one, we're working yeah, one on store. working on trying yeah, to get just more. Just so Abby knows, um, where you see over here, Abby, on this, where you see the electric meters yeah. and the transformer room, um, we're going to try to see if that can get moved somewhere else, and that would open up another 950 square feet of retail. Okay, so so this how much we have four retail spaces and with the total of how many uh, square feet? Another 30, 3,900. Okay, thirty nine. And what what's the seven thousand that was? That's, that's, that's existing. There now. Oh, existing. Okay. Right. So if we can move that, if we can move the electric meters, we would be up to about four thousand five hundred. Okay. But there's going to be less because the problem is the garage door has to go somewhere. The garage opening. There's a garage opening. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. yeah. No. 20 feet. It's 20 feet wide enough? Yeah. It's one wide. Steve, how, what, what, how are you addressing the co obligation at this moment? Uh, four units plus contributions in accordance with the ordinance. Okay, but we don't have an ordinance. We point? don't have a signed agreement for three. So I already had a meeting recently with the, the groups involved. They don't know what to do with that. We have an agreement, the judge agreed on it, but he just dragged his feet and never signed it. Um, Who's he? Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the judge. The judge. You don't have a signed agreement? Right? You don't have a signed agreement. So you're looking at Cliffs in yeah. South Brunswick? You're, you're one of the bad boys. <laughs> but we have an agreement. Yeah. He agreed to the agreement, but didn't sign it. And now there's new stages. I can't. Well, but you've been operating under those terms for all your other projects. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we have been doing. Um, but, but we had a meeting, and there was some discussion about which route they're going to take for the new system because we're not there yet what those numbers are going to be so that could change i mean, just want to make you aware of that i don't know that for sure okay. what we've typically done is said that you have to require whatever's required so whatever they're going to do so right if that changes so it's probably not going to be a hard and fast number it'll be something but no matter what it is what a, the, the requirement pursuant to a settlement you'd have to satisfy that okay we'll, we'll discuss that well that, that would, that's yeah. if we get to that point yeah that's open-ended what do we do about the easement? Um, we haven't decided. We, we, we can't do anything with that. The only thing we can do with the easement is either make a recommendation to the mayor and council okay. that they approve it, um, don't make a recommendation, or that's it. That's their only choices. But I don't think we're going to get that far because I think there's other things we want to see if you want to take the time to I do. Yeah. You know, I, uh, revise what we're talking about. If there are no other questions for the architect, I'd like to just talk about the civil changes, um, whatever we haven't discussed with, with Bob Weiss. Okay. Uh, just one, one yeah. to the, the um, material on the facade, is it like real brick or is it half brick or, or is it no brick at all? <laughs> no, it looks like it's brick. And, and is that also um, um, brick and what's the other material? Uh, brick and stucco and uh, yes, it will be brick um, and stucco and And some pre-cast lintels. Although I am the main body that will be stuck on brick. Okay. And then stucco. What do like? I, I don't think stucco has always been like well thought of. Um, well, it's stucco. It's not ethos. Yeah. Okay. So it's not synthetic stucco. Not synthetic real, it's stucco. real three foot stucco. Okay. Is is there like cement products that yes. are more durable, or is this? A it cement is a cement product. product. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just sit the better. 
Oh, yeah. Um, just before we do that, can we open it up to the public if they want to have any questions for the architect? Anyone from the public want to have any questions for the architect? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion. For the architect. Bob, you've been sworn in. You're under oath. You've been qualified. And you've answered a ton of questions. I will just ask you to address the board with whatever other changes that haven't yet come up on the civil side of this board. Yeah, there's very little change on the civil side uh, relating to the part that we uh, recall on the leaders on the prior. Uh, based on concerns of exiting out of Lake Side Avenue, we, uh, make, that is going to be an interest only. Uh, the exit is going to come out of Colfax, as we um, discussed. Uh, there's some uh, treescapes that we've had along the, uh, the roads along Colfax, along Lake Side, and one tree along uh, Wanakew. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the count we end up with a 1.4 ratio parking for uh, per unit. Uh, so reduction obviously from 56 to 51 units. Uh, that's more contextual. Uh, but so everything else pretty much remains the same. We're proposing obviously drainage efforts and pothole drainage systems. Uh, there's some modifications to the existing sewers that we originally showed and that is not remain unchanged. Um, and that's primarily it. We, we did talk about the two unit two space reduction uh, in the pothole parking that exists now that would be required for our access to the lower level. And I think that's the extent of the park that we went through the uh, square footage of the park and we have a number of unit counts. Um, and that's it from a civil perspective. If you just want to highlight uh, what we don't comply with that we would need. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we don't comply with Yeah, we do know that we'll be looking for uh, rear yard required 10 feet, which is opposed to zero feet, the rear yard setback. Uh, the building coverage, 75% is permitted. We're proposing 97% building coverage. Uh, and the last impervious coverage, we are proposing 100% versus 5%. Uh, last is the uh, number story six versus the three uh, permitted, 68 feet versus 45 feet is permitted. Uh, so they would be able to the development plan of trusts. Which will be required because those would not be able to be uh, sought as deviations because they would be variances of height. Where, where the height? Yeah, but not the other ones. Correct. But if we're, if we're making a recommendation to change the plan, we can say do it all. Do you have a list of the variances to, uh, that I, 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 do I have? If you look at the site plan in the zoning analysis, they're marked with asterisks the four of them. What, um, what page? <laughs> okay, so it's the only the engineer thing. Oh, okay. sheet on the screen. Oh. It's actually in the public. Is it this? This is the So it's right here is where you um, see my cursor. Okay, I think I just see, I think I found it. So it's going to be zero rear yard setback, 97% building coverage. 100% impervious and 68 feet, six stories. Correct. Correct. Thanks. Yes, we're just. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would also need a park. Well, we do want to mention, but we'd also need a. So we can right. research the one. So they want a height height seven? Yes. Okay. All right. So six stories. Is that from the back of the building? No, that's from. So it's how your ordinance defines oh, okay. six stories. Okay. Would include the lower level. Yes. Oh, I yeah, so three to allow. Okay, let's do one at a time. Why they're looking for that? I agree with you. It, you know, we got to try to cut that 100 percent coverage. That's a big number. I mean, you need some of it. Well, it's, a lot of it has been. Um, we have the atrium, uh, which is green, basically inside the, the, the courtyard area that's open to the sky. That is green as grass. That will be uh, considered. Um, but that's not included in your coverage. So why is it 100 percent? That's open. Uh, it's because the building basically covers that area. We're just, uh, you know, it, it's like an offering to show that there is going to be green space, whether it, 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 it's 
and I think I know what you're saying. Building, so it's, it's considered technical coverage, but we it will be It's grabbed. building coverage, but the courtyard mitigates the impacts but the, of, of the coverage. But also the sidewalks are included in that calculation as well. Of course, that yes. That's correct. Okay. But isn't there part of the sidewalk has some space in it for trees and green? Yes, so that's within the right of way. Right, that's only it's all in the right of way. There's none of it in, on your property. No, the sidewalk goes right up to the building, and the, the cutouts for the trees are all within the right of way. So the middle council. So you have no trees on your property. Correct. We have the green space for the atrium. Right. What's going on on your roof? The highest roof. All right. So we have um, sixty-eight feet from the. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to answer with on the roof? Yes. Please. Uh, anyway, the roof, the roof is just going to have drainage. Okay. And they have a couple. Um, I'll check to see what we have shown on here, but typically yeah, they have a couple rooftop units to service um, any mm -hmm. uh, tenant space. Yeah, have a couple, a couple rooftop units shown and a hatch to access. Okay, it's a, it's a regular, regular roof. roof. Yes, regular roof. No. So, so no when we have a situation where there's 100% coverage and there's constraints, one option, and I don't know how this agency feels about it, is that we require a green roof and calculate that differently, give them a bonus for coverage or something. I'm talking about an intensive green roof um, that meets, store, yeah, if there's sure. stormwater infiltration or whatever else. That is one way that it can be written. I've done them elsewhere. Okay. I mean, it doesn't give you the benefit of ground level enjoyment, but it takes care of the stormwater issues. The stormwater issues. And the, the courtyard is going to be green? Green, yes. And it's going to be also. Yes. Well, green and intensive green are two different Okay. Things. But the, the, I get that. Yeah. And then we'll be able to drain a job to involved with it because it's you know, a service with this within the building. So. The we'll drainage incorporated with that is obviously the roof drainage will connect to existing drainage in the courtyard, which is where pretty much all the existing drainage goes. That's a good idea, though. That's a very good idea. I was going to ask a question there. Forgot. So it's run by the great idea? Yes, exactly. Oh, I know. Um, when I look at the building, and for the life of me, it's just one of these things I can never remember. The, um, the technical term for it. Um, the air conditioning vents. PTEX. Uh, yep, the PTEX. Yep. Those will be the color of the building, not white. We will be no, consistent, consistent with all the other approvals. We will match them and all venting to the roof. No. All, all dryer venting. All venting. Everything's all in the vent. vent. Okay. All vent. So these will be basically invisible and there will be no vents. They will be painted, painted to match the brick color, brick and the white stucco color, yep. color, and maintain. Okay. So, you know, like I, I know we're doing this in, in um, the Meridian and, and Lakeside. But is it a cheap way, or, or you know, to to do? I mean, is it a good way to do it? To, to it? be um, P tax as, a, tax, as, yeah, as a, an alternative to right. central air. Yeah, How does I that, mean, it's a cheaper way to do it. Yeah, I mean, but is it like loud in like in, in, in hotel room? It can be really loud. It's like, what is it like inside the building with that P tax? It's pretty standard for all the projects that I'm doing at this point. Yeah, I've noticed that, but I haven't noticed that. And every like when I ride through other towns, I don't see that um, all the time. Just I, like, I never had somebody come up to me and say I have them in my unit. They're horrible. Okay. I heard noise clips, but I'm, that's only at all. Yeah, I mean, I we are having them, and I don't really. The only experience I have with them is in an inexpensive hotel. So I'm just wondering, are they, are they, how do we find them? Does anybody have any kind of background information? Because we're putting them. Well, in Lakeside's been up for many years now. I know. How many complaints? Well, how many weekends anyway? But. Oh, you've got plenty of complaints from people. We did, but not that. <laughs> but does anybody? Does nobody has any any background information? I can tell you that we use with some apartments I have. They, they they don't last as long as Central Air, so they 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 crap out much quicker. And as they get older, just like any air conditioner here, they get a little loud. I mean, okay. That's just normal wear and tear uh, as an air conditioner. But you know, when they start off, they're pretty quiet. Um, Are you talking about loud from inside or loud from outside? Well, both. But I, I don't notice them from the outside, but I'm usually in a car when I'm running by Lakeside. Um, Meridian's not up and running. And, and when um, you're in a hotel room, um, they can be loud. Are you talking about the noise that you hear from the outside? Both. I mean, I'm asking, like, I know from the inside it can be loud. Yeah, the inside you can. I, I don't know about the outside. I don't know about the outside. I haven't heard that noise outside, but I, I haven't listened to it. 
I just, you know, we have just been approving them, and, and we don't really have any background on them, so I just wanted to, yep. like, see if maybe we should kind of look into that. Is that really, is that a good thing? Okay. Emma. Hey, you are. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the noise. I know that in other towns we've certainly done what they're suggesting that they will do, which is to camouflage them in the facade okay. um, because they aren't great looking when they aren't camouflaged. Right. Um, but I mean, I've never heard anybody say anything about the noise. Okay. But that's just like. Yeah. It's anecdotal also. Right. <laughs> right. And that's. The yeah, see, when they're camouflaged and you're not looking for them, you right. don't really see them. No, no. But I, but I just mm -hmm. want to make sure they're not like, you know, I, it, what's the standard in in the industry? Are they like low standard, high standard, medium standard? I mean, like, what are we? Pretty market now, just because of, of the cost has considerably, you know, mm -hmm. or is considerably cheaper than than air, um, um, central air, and then I haven't heard the complaints. They really just happen. Okay. I, I mean, and. So, just a thought. I mean, I think maybe if anybody knows a way to, to like reach out, we've already approved um, 300 of them, right? So um, I just want to make sure we're approving good stuff. So anyway, a thought. I, I think a big improvement is the dog park. You know, because mm -hmm. the one thing we missed on the, on the first Lakeside project, and they're going to put one in now. You know, we don't want people walking their pets at the high school. I tell you that that's a that's a big deal for us right now. And people are complaining about that. So I would hope the residents would take use of what you're building, going to other areas, you know, and doing it. But definitely, we don't want them walking on the high school as a, as a place to I go. Believe that's the first green spot you see once you get out of those buildings. I believe Lakeside put something in because I drove through the parking yeah, lot. There's, the process, yeah. there's a thing with doggy bags and stuff mm -hmm. like that there now. So I think they're trying. OK. Anything else for the civil engineer? Just for questions. Okay. Going to open up to the general public for the civil engineer. Anyone have any questions for the engineer? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion on that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So now we'll do. Can we do general questions? If anybody has just generals? No. Okay. Um, open it up for general questions um, about the project for the experts for the attorney. Um, anyone have any com have any comments on it? For your comments. Um, for, now? Yeah. Okay. I see you back there. We're going to need to give a seat, though, so what are you guys going to do? Question about the roof. I know you're going to have a green roof on that. What is the longevity on that roof? And when it's replaced, is there a requirement to replace this with the same roof? Or can you do with the green roof and you just put a regular flat roof on that roof? I, do you know what the longevity is? They're long. Yeah, long. Regardless of what the longevity is, it's, it's long, but you can always make a like a deed restriction or something that says it has to be maintained in perpetuity. Well, if we're doing it for flood, not for flood, but for water control reasons, I would think that we should perpetuate that and keep that throughout the life of the building. That's, because that's all too often I see projects when they modify after five or 10 years or 15 years, or modify something that was approved by a board. And it's changed down the road, and it doesn't meet the requirements of the initial. There, there would be some sort of restriction that. that talks about maintenance, that talks about perpetuity, all that sort of stuff would be incorporated. So we'll have to get tied into this whole thing in an all manual operation and maintenance manual. That would be tied to the deed. So if this building would ever be sold, whoever buys it at that time will not only get whatever deed restrictions are there, there the easement, it also will have the operation maintenance manual. And also with the green roof, if you picture the green roof, it, the the maintenance that would have to be required with it, whatever that would be with what gets designed and installed, would be similar to what, let's say, a seepage pit goes in. All right, there's there'd be these requirements for that. Nobody sees that. That's underground. Right. This no one's going to see. It's up on the roof, except the people that go up on the roof. So what, you about the maintenance? what about the maintenance today? Who's responsible for inspecting that? The city that's probably uh, so the way that it's the way that the stormwater requirements are the we, we would probably tie it into that it's the building owner's responsibility to certify it every year, submit it to the town, the town reviews it, and they would have to then submit that with their it's called a tier A permit, the, the yearly tier A permit that goes into DEP for all the town's stormwater management facilities. Um, 
that that's a requirement that gets put into all the uh, planning board plans when it ultimately gets approved. Um, this would be no different than anything else than if somebody did underground storage tanks or uh, or a pond or a basin or anything. It's just tomato smile. And so I, I, I always agree to this the annual certification as a condition. We can put it in the declaration. Yeah. It's, the it's so pretty the roof fills the fortune for its intended purpose. Where does that water get dumped? Into our regular stormwater system? So, yeah, because that's where it ties out. Well, ultimately, it, ultimately, when it's designed, that's probably where it would tie out to. If it fails, just like anything else that would fail stormwater wise, it would go back to the owner of. The, in this case, the building, the lot, and everything, and they would have to remedy it as part of their OM manual. It, it's up to them to fix it. But, but to be clear, so we, the, the Green Group is a new suggestion, and we're, we're happy, but we don't need that to satisfy the stormwater requirements. We've already shown that and provided that this should just be in the okay. But ultimately, that stormwater is going to end up in the bond hole system? Yes, that's right. All right, because we just, we, we just did a borough project down there to relieve an issue. And I just want to make sure we're not going to compound that with another building now. It's going to dump more water into that space that we corrected, hopefully, to properly drain to the line. Well, why don't you comment on your stormwater analysis? Sure. sure. The, the, well, the existing site of the water is all drains to that location, so all the building targets. Uh, we are introducing some, uh, let me say, the atrium area, and the new inside the tree uh, that would supply some of the Okay, thanks. Anyone else have any questions about the project? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Okay. So I just want to recap where we are and the discussions we have. What what we will do is we will analyze that area where the transformer and meters are, and we will come back to you with whatever we think we can do, and we will do our best to try to make additional retail space. We will move that that uh, what I'm showing on the screen that little walkway uh, access, which I think we all agreed that that may be a good idea. Um, we'll we'll look at recessing the retail spaces as uh, suggested, uh, and we will come back. Other than those items that were the right green roof. Oh well, the other things we agree to get yeah, the, the green roof and, and uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I want to be clear that when we come back with those items changed, we're going to ask for a vote of some kind. Is there any other thing or any other thought or, or request? Um, because we've been here many times, we want to come back and we want to get along because we have then several council meetings, several planning board meetings to then follow through on, on the project. So, uh, did I summarize accurately everything that we're looking to? Anybody have uh, no, I think it's right. I think everything you said is spot on, and um, you've certainly been flexible with us, and you've been great taking our suggestions. So, uh, I, think, I think it's all covered. Thank you, Tom. Just on the other one. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely think from what you talked about, I know we talked a little bit more about parking, kind of how to work that out, whether to buy parking spots or at least some whatnot. But well, we're going to come in. We're, we're just because, we're going to come in with the request for the easement, and if the council, uh, I guess. I hear. The way the redevelopment agreement could be written uh, with with Andy is is the flexibility on that, either an easement or a right. rule of the lot or something. But the general, we don't have to come back. Yeah, I hear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It, would, it would be the ability to get 39, whatever the parking spaces down there are, either through an easement or purchasing or leasing. Some combination or something. there. Something. The ability to get those and access them. Yep. And where does the MUA stand on this? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what the MUA? Where do we stand with the MUA on this card? Um, I think we initially made yeah, it. It's been a while since we did yeah, the will serve. It's been a while, but yeah. Uh, sewer service, you know, sewer capacity available. They had done an analysis, and I don't remember exactly what Council President DeLine did. So the, the, I don't know if you guys are aware. For years, the, the MUA has said there was plenty of room, plenty of uh, more back in sewer. Well, they did an actual study now, the survey, and uh, sewer capacity is limited to about 150 more units, roughly. roughly. Okay, not everything that we're building now is in, in that process. 
she's already in. So we're talking about new projects moving forward. Okay. Once you reach that 150 or whatever that number is, could be 140, could be 170, whatever that number is, then it's going to be a renegotiation with developers on how we fix that problem. Is that just sewer or water flow? It's just sewer right now. Um, so I would suggest, and that's a good point that Councilman Bennett brought up, you want to meet with the MUA as soon as you can just to iron that out. We'll do. And, 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 then, and then my concern is like we need to really, I think, uh, your part of the concern, but the concern for uh, this board is that we really need to know that number because we're approving things without a, a grand scheme of things. And well, so they've we given have, us a number that they have. It. So it, it's, it's roughly 150 smaller units. So this is how many units? 51. So we have, we have like about 100 units yeah. left. Right. I mean, I just I think the scope of the the project is kind of large for the area, and so that is my concern. Has been my concern the whole time. I, I do like the fact that you're going to maybe address the new roof and um, assess the retail space and um, sidewalks and sidewalks are a little bit larger. Um, but, you know, it's just a, it's a very large building once again. Um, you know, it's very large. The scale is large. <laughs> I'm okay with everything that's been said. Well, thank you all. So I, I have one, just one oh, thing you're going to look at, and it's not for this board right now, but it's something to keep in mind about the ramp, removing the ramp, buying less spots, seeing if we can give you more spots. You know, there's a couple options there. You know, don't put all your apples in one barrel right now. Let's, let's look at the right way how we're going to do this. Maybe have a backup plan if each one doesn't work right. Um, because I think that 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 is key to this whole project. Um, and that, that's going to be a council vote. So, that recommendation or not, they're still going to want to know those answers. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Steve. Thank you. <coughs> okay. We have no new or unfinished business. Um, we're going to go to executive session. You have a resolution? I have a resolution. It's a resolution authorizing closed session. Okay. So it was Quigley <laughs> and who else? Uh, Ken. 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 Oh, do we have it? We're, we're still in session now. Right. Okay. So there's nobody here from the public, right? No. You can open to the public. Right. We'll open it again to the public. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? <laughs> See. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close the public portion. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. all right. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, that was a late one. Good luck.